times now. He wins his time. <laughs> With the days being pretty physical, long, exhausting, uh, I found that the fitter I am and I guess the more endurance I have to be able to do that all day, the more successful I am. You know, um, If you're doing this two, three, four days, backing it up every day, doing 20, 25 kilometers, it really takes a toll on your body. You know, So I try and be in the best physical shape I can. Um, it's certainly not a gentleman's sport, hunting boars in the mountains, you know, it's not just dawdling around a lot of the time you're sort of running up or down a mountain catching your breath puffing physically exhausted tired and weak but i guess being in the best shape you can possibly be is again going to help you you know so it's a, it's a really really physical form of hunting but again I, I really enjoy that side of things you know it's something it's a challenge on almost every aspect and facet of this style of hunting One thing um, with this sort of weather system that's coming to, that's going to make the wind a lot more unpredictable or harder to read than usual. So, got a lot of cloud cover today, which is actually really good as long as it doesn't rain. So, these days, like this, where it's sort of overcast, drizzly rain, um, it, it also makes it a bit hard to hunt because they can come out at any time. So. We find them regardless. Try to anyway. So over the last few years, we've obviously experienced drier seasons than normal uh, and I guess what this has done in particular over the last 18 months is really knocked the pig numbers about. Populations just simply aren't there like they used to be so what this has forced me to do is become a better hunter myself. Five, six, seven years ago you might have gone out and seen 200 pigs for the day and that was normal. Now it's you go out and you might see 10 or 12 pigs for the day let alone a shooter boar. Um, so it's really forced me to, I guess, hone my skills and become a better bow hunter and really learn these pig's habits and behaviours to be able to actually go out and successfully hunt a boar, you know, when the numbers are so low. So I'm, I'm kind of thankful for that, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's pressured me to be a better hunter, think more, um, be a little bit more resourceful and put in a lot more effort to be successful. So off this, you know, as the numbers are starting to increase, I've obviously got a bigger and broader skill set. I, I really know where to look for pigs at certain times. I'm thinking in relation to moon phase, weather, temperature, time of year, everything like that correlates together. And you can use that information and go, okay, this, this and this, it's cold overnight, no moon, I'm gonna go look in this particular spot. So it's really forced me to, I guess, think a lot more and be a bit more calculated in my hunts. And obviously that's paying dividends, you know, like I'm still shooting good boars regularly when the numbers aren't quite there. But I am looking forward to some better seasons, which it looks like we are having now. Um, got a bit more rain, the landscape's greened up, the dams are full, the rivers are running. So it's, it's looking positive for the future on the animal side of things. So a lot of the time, days like that um, are pretty well the norm. So it's 20 k's on foot in the mountains. Um, 
big anything, anything big day for me is 20 to 25k sort of thing so this was with a lot of glassing yesterday but pretty well it just comes down to effort you know like it's how bad are you going to stay at here how much ground are you going to cover um, basically to find these things and then physically get onto them you know you might have to find yourself running two or three k's across a mountain up and down a ridge or two to actually get to them in time so a lot of effort it's kind of like a fast paced marathon this it's it's fast when you need to but also slow when you have to a uh, bit of a funny mix but at the end of the day it's just putting in the effort is the difference time on the mountain So we spent a couple of hours this morning glassing that you've just seen. Haven't been able to see a great deal, so we decided to sort of cover a bit of ground, check out um, a bit of sign. You can see it there, just behind us there. But um, changing spots for the afternoon, and I think we might try a bit more direct approach and sort of get in where they're bedding up, as I don't think the big boars are showing themselves at the moment. So just going to keep punching up the hill here and hope we can run into one this afternoon. It's turned into a bit of a grind. Legs are a bit sore. But it's all part of it, you know, you just gotta put in big days and eventually we'll come onto one. But fingers crossed it'll happen this afternoon. Um, I know there's a couple of pigs that we've been looking at on this particular ridge coming out of an afternoon from the opposite side, we've been seeing them. So we'll give them a bit better look and see if there's a big boar tucked away somewhere. So the weather's settled in just a little bit, uh, a bit of fog rolling in, but finally found some boars. What we think might be rutting pigs down in the valley below us. We've seen this mob yesterday, uh, and we sort of didn't give them too much attention, but on closer inspection, they all look like a bigger class of pigs, sort of like 60, 70 kilo, maybe better. Um, so we're just gonna go down and have a look um, before they disappear in this fog bank pretty well. Could get lucky and there could be some handy boars in there um, and if not we'll definitely know that they're not worth sort of checking out in the next couple of days but should be a pretty easy stalk to get down there and get the wind right I'm hoping um, sort of on an open face but um, yeah make a play and see how we go so I've just laid eyes on a boar I'm um, down in this gully he's in a really shootable position so I'm going to quickly make a dash down hopefully the wind stays in there and put an arrow in him so Welcome to hunting the mountains in the wind.
well, that's another day drawing to a close. Pretty good day today. We sort of located the pigs um, in the general vicinity of where they are. We've kind of been looking in the wrong areas. So really going to concentrate on the little tucked out of the way gullies out of the wind especially. So uh, we've had a lot of wind in the last day and a half. So it's sort of put them in those quiet gullies, those cones of silence, I guess, that they like. Um, yeah, just good to get in. Well, I think we got into 34 in that big bore earlier. So I'm doing the right things now and tomorrow's a new day. of a vantage point on first light, I'm trying to glass up whatever we can pretty well, fog sort of half set in, which won't be great in a little bit, but nothing as of yet, but it can all change in a matter of seconds, just got to keep persisting at this, like keep rolling dice, keep rolling the dice, and eventually like you'll come onto one who makes a mistake, puts himself out in the open for long enough to get a chance on him. doesn't look it, but it's a little bit cold. Um, basically what I'm hoping is that the pigs are pretty well, or the boars anyway, have camped up overnight. Um, because one, no moon, two, the rain, and three, it's so cold. They're like us, they like to be comfortable. During like the peak of winter, uh, when the hunting's good and the weather's cold, you'll actually have to wait for them to come out of their beds and come out into the open. Um, and they can just do that randomly. It could be seven o'clock in the morning, could be 11 o'clock, could be one o'clock. It's a bit of a catch-22, but they do put themselves out in the daylight for a lot longer, which we like. So we've just got to tough it out here in the cold. Just out rolling the dice again. <laughs> That's a boar. He's got a big box head on him picked up on a spotted boar, he sort of fed out um, way down in the bottom of the creek but there's six or seven roos right next to him so I think we're going to have to wait, he's actually feeding out for once which is good um, so hopefully he feeds in a little bit from the roos and we might make a bit of a play on him so he's probably down uh, feeding in the gully just to keep out of the wind down there, it's sort of pretty protected, nice and quiet out of the wind it's a little bit warmer as opposed to on the open faces so kind of concentrating, glassing the areas and those little nooks and crannies. And obviously, it's a pig in one of them, so... Just got a couple of kangaroos up in the gully that we need to get past, so... Need them to uh, piss off. But that boar is probably 250 up in this gully where he crossed in. And from there, where he's gone, who knows? It just happened. Maybe he hasn't gone too far. So we're just down with that boar we last seen. He's gone in the creek here and cut along. Um, hopefully, he hasn't gone too far, but. Who knows, we're just going to follow him up the best we can and try and bump into him again.
Oh. He was about to go. How good's that? See, I, I didn't think we were going to catch that ball, to be honest. He come out, fed in the open, and um, had to wait for about 20 roos to pass through. We've come down and he was only oh, 80 yards from where we last seen him. So, <sighs> Decent sort of pig. Um, didn't get much of a look at him, but I think he caught a bit of movement as well coming up. I heard something was going to sort of move off and put it through and then, so... <sighs> so I think... That's awesome. I love this style of hunting. Mountain boars, we've, we've slogged it out for a couple of days now in some pretty crazy weather. It's all come together. So there's that arrow. Um, it snapped off from about 15 yards past where the impact site was, so good bubbly blood on there, as you can see. I'm thinking he's probably gone about 70 or 80 down the creek here. I hit him a touch far back um, as he was on the walk. I probably didn't have enough lead on him, but it's double lung. Hopefully it's not too far along the creek. Pretty soft dirt, good blood on the ground, so keep following along and pick him up eventually. What we come here for? For me, it doesn't get much better than this. Uh, hunting boars in the mountains. It's not your typical style of hunting, you know. Very minimal opportunities, it's often rushed. Not much finesse in it when it happens, but um, there's a lot of effort in between these boars. Early mornings, late nights, lots of miles on the mountain, and lots of time behind the glass as well. And often at times, it, it's a mad sprint to the pig. You've got a couple of seconds to make it, make it count realistically. Uh, this guy was on the move back into his bed, into the thick stuff, and we sort of had to get down and catch him. So that's what's about intercepting them whilst they're giving you those couple of minutes of opportunity uh, in the open. But yeah, as I said, this for me doesn't get any better. It's my favorite style of hunting. It's hard, it's fast paced, and it's basically what I'm super passionate about, you know, hunting these big boars in the mountains. Full credit to these pigs, the landscape that they live in. It's unrelenting, unforgiving. And yeah, it just keeps drawing me back time and time again. It's what it's about for me.